Let's fill some hard drives. Beyond the stars lies a web of pearls, each gemstone a miniature world unto itself. Upon these worlds interconnected, our stories are told, and the fate of creation hangs in the balance. Welcome to the Titan's Gift. Greetings, and welcome to Jaiger and Die Presents Titan's Gift, Season 4, Episode 1. I am your DM and host, Marty, joined by the full Seattle crew. How is everyone doing on this fine Tuesday? Long time to see for some of you. Are, are, are hey. warm and toasty? Yes, I, I your mics are warm and toasty. Oh, okay. Delightful. Yes. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah. Howdy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's good for the it's good for the snowy weather, Max. <laughs> Very important that I have a toasty mic. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I feel cozy. <laughs> cozy voice. <laughs> There you go. All you need is the CNN logo, and this is CNN, and you're good. <laughs> I'm, I'm working that Wolf Blitzer beard, so. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> sort of, sort of Wolf Blitzer that's that's sort of uh, uh, gone a little feral. That's <laughs> <laughs> feral Blitzer. Wolf feral. <laughs> Dire Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> Teen Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> oh, goodness. That, that, yeah, that's got potential. Yep. <laughs> How's everyone doing? What's new and exciting? Great. This is great. So Luke's yeah, putting together that? a new laptop because his last one just died or yeah i was uh i was playing uh banner saga 2 i played the first one way back in the day um and finally my wife was using the big computer to play uh play a video game and so i was playing banner saga on the old laptop because it's one of the only games it could handle uh and like left it on came back to it and it was dead screen wouldn't turn on plugging it in, nothing would happen. I could get like a little light to come on when it was plugged in, tried unplugging the battery and plugging it back in. and uh, It was too much up. banner, too much saga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just too much banner saga, yeah. So it died, so gave me an excuse to buy a new laptop for the first time in like seven years. So uh, got a real nice one, pretty excited to use it. Nice. Uh, it just came in the mail today, so I was spending uh after work just furiously trying to get it updated and everything installed so yeah but i think we're good good stuff yeah neil what's new with you man all's good man all's good um been watching hockey enjoying that a lot and i have this friend called marty and every time there's a game we text each other and <laughs> talk a lot of crap about hockey and players yep. and <laughs> I, I, goal, I, he's going too far out. And... <laughs> I'm very happy that I converted the South African to love the, the sport that I do. <laughs> you know, as part of being American, that's the thing now, right? <laughs> sure. Get influenced by Canadians. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's been a lot of fun. Um, the friend of mine also gave me this very, very cool gift. Look at that. Like a Seattle Kraken. Oh, oh, very nice. Like it's on my desk right here with me. I haven't had the heart to take it out of the bag yet. At some point, I will. <laughs> because it's really, really nice. <laughs> uh, so, you know, all, all, all's fun. Uh, in all seriousness, you know, it's been winter. So, heads down, working most of the time. A little bit of snow drizzles every once in a while. That's a lot of fun always. Um, and yeah, planning my next holiday, which is in July. So when other people go on holiday, you know, I, I get a little envious. No, no, no pressure, Matt. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. Nothing to complain. Good. Max, what's what's new with you, man? When was the last time we talked? Had I had I finished God of War Ragnarok last time we talked? Maybe um, it was in like December or something like that. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, we played God of War Ragnarok. Christmas break was good. Um, did this is the first year we actually didn't go home to Northern California. So, um, my uh, wife's parents came up and stayed with us for a bit. Um, and actually, a couple of weeks ago, we had like a 
makeup kind of Christmas trip where I flew my mom and some of my siblings out. They stayed here for a week. Um, nice. So that was super cool. And then in March, we're going down to Disneyland for my nephew's fifth birthday. Oh, so it was like fun. a big family gathering. It's grouping up there. On the um, on the free time side, we just finished Hogwarts Legacy. Been playing with playing that a bunch. My wife and I both made our own characters. Um, that was very that was a big nostalgia trip. It was fun. And then I think on like the big crazy purchase stuff, uh, we just bought a new table, and so it's supposed to get delivered here like next week. We we commissioned it in November, so we got like this big uh, live wood or live edge walnut sort of table with a big resin like river in the middle of it oh, yeah it looks, it looks rad they're like standing I've seen awesome. videos of the making oh man it that's looks awesome so cool we're, we're super stoked um so that, that's supposed to come in here in the next week or two are you gonna use it for gaming and that sort of thing or yeah, yeah i actually okay. i got it at eight by four feet it's Good a size. big ass table yep. and it's got enough space for us to put that 3d or that tv screen in the middle and still have room for a laptop on each side. Nice. Um, so it, it'll it'll definitely be used for tabletop games. <laughs> nice. Pretty excited about it. Because <laughs> otherwise, I was like, "Why are you getting excited about a table?" <laughs> <laughs> well, because it looks so fucking awesome, <laughs> and also sorry. because I've had like I've had the same shitty like black IKEA table since like I moved out of my parents' house. This thing is like <laughs> yeah. beat up. And we've had it for like fifteen years. It's made out of, you know, particle board or whatever the hell, like we've moved with it eight times or something like that. So yep. it's, it's exciting. Yep. It's, it's, it's big, big boy purchases. <laughs> no, I, I, I got excited when I bought a conference table for the house, you know, like, like it's, yeah, office furniture. Why gaming? <laughs> Room for gaming. Uh, I, I know, I know the excitement there. Um, Kitchen table, I, I'm still eating off something that a TV is on, <laughs> you know, like a <laughs> uh, 12-year-old table at this point in time. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, gaming does. Matt? I went to very... Maui for a week. Nice. Yeah, you're looking very festive. Nice. Yeah, yeah. This shirt we got here in Seattle before before we went there, but uh, but yeah, it's it's great. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was relaxing. Um I, I upgraded my VC setup, so I've got uh, sort of a camera behind a teleprompter with an iPad reflecting up the, the video, um, which lets me kind of look directly at the camera, which is kind of, I don't know, subtle, but it's, it's kind of cool. Um, nice. Parents are coming out with my sister next week for uh, my birthday. It's probably the cool. first time hey. I, I've uh, hung out with, with family on my birthday in, I don't know, like, 30 years at least probably yeah <laughs> you know happy 31st birthday then <laughs> yeah uh, that's it. i thought i thought yeah, they were like happy birthday and talked me out into the feral wilds right <laughs> uh, yep yep uh so i had i guess the last time we talked um some hardware issues so it doesn't look at, like new from the, it actually looks really boring and the same from this from this view but let me share. I dropped a, a uh, image into Map Tool. That is the new. That is the new streaming setup. So that's what I see. A plethora of color around me. Uh, Map Tool server got replaced by a really kick-ass machine that will eventually become primary. Uh, and I've got a lot of monitors and art because I realized the walls were like just so bare. If so you zoom in, you can see the professor's face. You can tell that Marty's been. Uh... <laughs> Digging around in some of those character sheets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the top of his character sheet of all the things that that have gone wrong, <laughs> and chuckling uh, yeah. and chuckling about the cholera. <laughs> but yeah, you're, you're cholera, right. Cholera, dude. You you did catch me looking at your character sheets, which which I do. I love map tools for that. When you guys make an update, uh, I could see what you guys are working on, and and uh, it's all there. Uh, what you're saying is none of those images are AI generated. No, these are all. Um, um, uh, William Blake is a uh, um, like a painter and poet from the early 1800s, and this is his uh, the Great Red Dragon series. So from left to right, 
That's the Great Red Dragon and the Beast from the Sea. That one is the number of the beast is 666. The next one, uh, which one is it? This one uh, is Great Red Dragon and the Woman Clothed in Sun. And that's the Great Red Dragon and the Woman Clothed in Sun Revelations, I think. Yes. I think that Revelations one is in the movie Red Dragon is where I recognize it from. I, it could be. Could be. Uh, these these just are just so like planescapey and and like like hearken to they're 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 about the Bible I guess revelations but they 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 have a lot of influence I can see from like Greek art almost or at least Greek myth mm -hmm. uh, yeah so we're missing two arts <laughs> there are two arts that are on their way one is going to be uh, Goya's um, Saturn eating his children. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Cronus eating his children because there was a prophecy that one of his children would end up defeating him. So he basically sat beside his wife, and whenever she gave birth, he, he ate, ate her, his own children. And then uh, I've got a Planescape, like just the Lady of Pain symbol from Planescape Torment. It's all by itself on a nice, uh, a nice square background, and that one will go, will go on this wall. Uh, probably replace the, the Kraken thing, but. Well, I'll just gonna move into the rest of the apartment. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah, it's much more interesting view from this way. Unfortunately, behind me just looks this looks the same. Um, it's, it's nice you're not just staring at blank walls anymore. Buddy. Yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, some updates. Um, hockey. It's kind of it's kind of it. Um, did some game prep and we're ready to go. Why don't we do a recap of what happened last game? Uh, let's see. Let's do the last two. Not today, Chief. Zephyrus comes through the library at Flameford. Whilst, whilst Thurgus and the Professor prove their might and endurance before the ruins of the Atlas's, uh, uh, before the ruins of Atlas's temple, the town comes under attack. By the combined forces of the Queen, Gargoyles from the Tower of Alchemy, and Red Mantis Assassins. In the last game, it was Panic Room. After defeating the initial wave of enemies at the Chieftain's Hall, the party rushes to the <laughs> halls of the Great Simbast before their enemy destroys the library contained within. They were definitely there to, um, uh, to ruin the knowledge that was, uh, that was inside of this ancient library. Chapter four begins, I think, with you guys doing a bunch of downtime, following your um, saving of the Sun Shaman and the people of Flameford beating back the Queen's forces and the uh, another wave of assassin attacks. Um, you guys have bought yourself a little bit of time, perhaps as your enemy recoups and licks their wounds. Um, and apparently it looks like by your planning... You're going to sell a bunch of the items and things that you've captured over the last few adventures and, uh, and get heavily invested in some crafting, it looks like. Um, before we dive into what exactly you craft, uh, the resident uh, or the chieftain that you also saved, well, let me force you guys to the miniature or to the screen. Before I start dropping tokens onto my computer desk and having you guys, appear, your characters appear here and be all weird and meta. Um. All right, so in Flameford, um, you guys are hailed as heroes. Uh, not only do you have, did you save them from a wave of attacks, you saved two of their leaders, namely the Sun Shaman and, Ch and Chief Reddyclaw, as well as proved your bravery by... Um, um, showing not one but a bunch of crystals that you had harvested from inside Cindermaw's gut. Um, this, all of these things combined uh, have made you effectively, successfully shed the term of um, Mockstander. Hey! <laughs> uh, and are effectively considered honorary recaster catfolk of of the Skarin tribes. Um, you're able to walk freely amongst them. You find commerce is much easier to do. 
Uh, there is no fur uh, skin and bones that is more than willing to help the glorious heroes sell their goods. Uh, and he does so, he does so, uh, and he treats you fairly. Um, you don't get any problems from Nofer. You are gathered, however, before the chieftain. This is several days after, after a bit of rest and picking, uh, picking through the rubble, disposing of, uh, disposing of bodies, honoring the dead. And you are rewarded, uh, by, uh, Chief Readyclaw with a number of things. They notice that you like things <laughs> by the sheer quantities of wealth that you've you've brought here and and yes. are beginning to distribute you realize that this market <laughs> won't be enough but you guys have teleport and you're able to teleport around to the various places in bostera to do your selling and buying and crafting um let's see where did i put this stuff oh yes gifts from flameford for fair say they they, they replace effectively her shield into a plus three singing steel buckler. Oh, very nice. Um, in honor what of... What was singing steel again? And this was some... We found this doing downtime stuff, right? Some crazy metal. Yeah, it, it's a very shiny, uh, very light metal that gives off a, um, a high-pitched uh, ping that helps bards do their bard songs faster. Nice. Now, I don't know if it does anything for you at this level. Um, let me just have a quick look here. I just reached the level where bard song would be a swift action to start okay uh, instead of a standard instead of a move oh instead of a move so which effectively standard goes down to move goes down to swift and then that's kind of that's kind of it so if your bard song is a swift i'm going to let you start it as a free uh, a swift through your class, then you could start it as a free with the singing with the singing steel. Yeah, that that is just awesome. so it, it does something. Yep. Uh, the rest of the um, uh, they they give Thurgus a weapon augment ring, which is a um, an item that you can affix to different weapons and it provides bane dragons to the weapon that you fi uh, fix it to oh thank you very much you'd only have one weapon augment ring at a time for zephyros they borrow his staff and they they add a three charge option to the staff to cast controlled fireball. More fireballs for Zephyrus? <laughs> so if we scroll down to Zephyrus' staff, basically what we need to add. Um, you see how it says burning hands, one charge, fireball, two charges, wall of fire, three charges. It has an additional option. Just add another line. Controlled fireball is the name of the spell. And it takes three charges to cast. He's only going to need one. <laughs> <laughs> um, controlled, so controlled fireball is just like fireball, except it does minimum damage to your allies. Zephyrus so is obviously mighty pleased about this, but not nearly as pleased as all of his allies are. <laughs> <laughs> all right and then uh they seem to have a hard time uh picking out a reward for the professor and end up bestowing upon him a bundle of scrolls oh thank you oh, wait. oh Just no wait. Yes. oh how did you know there are three scrolls. One is a scroll of weird, caster level 17. One is a scroll of scintillating pattern, caster level 15. And the last scroll is a scroll of project image, 
caster level 13. <laughs> they, they all appear to have been from different sources, and they, they were, like, on different uh, uh, types of parchment or paper. Um, the weird was actually a tablet. Um, oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, thank you. You get the sense that they, they dug deep and found, like, their three most powerful illusion spells when they found out you were an illusionist and seemed to want to reward you in that way. Of course, your illusions, like the big dragon you summoned and, uh, and in other places, kept people safe, uh, diverting attacks from those gargoyles and, uh, and from, uh, away from the warriors, uh, was noticed. Now, perhaps they don't know what they've done by giving you attack illusion spells but <laughs> <laughs> has anyone noticed the new statue in the library if they have they haven't complained to you about it <laughs> they might be confused about their inability to move it <laughs> great <laughs> ah sweet these are sweet i haven't seen these yet weird especially is really sweet that's a good one yeah There, there is a, there is like a, a dinner where, where everyone, where everyone in the village is there. Some of them come pay their, pay their respects, and you, like, there's a dinner in your honor during the downtime. Um, this opens up their markets to you, and it looks like um, some of you did some crafting as well as selling. There was a significant amount of wealth that you guys are distributing. Uh, in order to distribute this much wealth, you have to go back to. The House of the Moon. You have to go back to Callow Mounds. Uh, you even have to go back to Bostera Town, although probably with guards and your 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 guards up while going there uh, to distribute the wealth. But in total, uh, Bostera the Pearl is pretty much yours at this point in time, or at least uh, it, it is. Uh, um, it's safe enough in this lull uh, between battles. Now I'm gonna, you guys planned out 11 weeks of downtime. I'm not gonna exhaustively go through what each of you did each week because that's a bit dull, but you guys have diligently planned out different things that you're gonna craft and how you're gonna spend your money. Uh, maybe I can ask you guys um, to summarize what each of you has done uh, during that time. And then I think there's a few things in particular that Ferris wants to do that's worth us stopping and actually detailing the outcome. So let's start with um, let's start with uh, Thurgus. How did you spend the fifty five days or so that uh, the party is going to take uh, during the winter and spring of this year? Yeah. So um, first things first. Christopher is kind of upset at Thurgus's inability to know things. He's kind of a big dumb bear. So they spent some time sort of researching uh, enemies, the types of sort of physiology associated with um, different creatures, where to stab them most effectively. Uh, uh, Thurgus asked a lot of questions around like, yeah, but like, how do I kill a dead? Why is it that my bladed weapon always deals less damage? That kind of stuff. Um, and effectively retrained into improved monster lore, which is pretty exciting. Uh, then they spent some time crafting together. He spent some time investing in making this dagger that he had had for a really long time, this large size, uh, brilliant energy dagger, and giving it greater transformative, which allows it to change shape. Um, and so now he has a brilliant energy greatsword, which is pretty awesome. But <laughs> if you have two greatswords, there's really only one option. You have to figure out how to dual wield those greatswords. <laughs> <laughs> so Christopher has uh, gone on this sort of exploratory path on how do we fuse giant amounts of blood onto your body to make you a dual-wielding greatsword badass. Uh, and so they went down that road. And uh, now uh, Thurgus can summon two additional arms made of this sort of manifested hardened blood, which is great. Uh, we've run into some trouble with uh, mirror images and displacement and the like. And so... Uh, the last big, big crafting thing was getting truthful on his uh, primary greatsword. And then they reinforced the armor um, and gave it uh, fortification. 
So now he's a little bit more robust when it comes to critical hits. And by we, Christopher is the one with all the craft feats, right? So Christopher, you're... Christopher has the weapon smithing stuff. Got Thurgus it. has armor smithing. And so they kind of, and, they, they, they're collaborative in some of these things. And when you were studying all these like w different types of enemies and where to hit them, where were you doing that? Were you at the library or? That would, that would make sense. Yeah. But like Thurgus doesn't read books. So it would be like Christopher staining these pages, flipping through them and showing him pictures. And Thurgis going like, okay, all right, all right, that makes sense. I guess you got hit him with a flat side or something, whatever, you know, <laughs> well, and, and just. We'll get to the professor. The professor does his uh, beginning of his downtime in the library as well. And he can't see Christopher. Sometimes he can, sometimes he can. It's kind of a figment. So he just looks up from his pages and sees you like, oh, that makes sense, flipping through pages and just a tear just runs down his face <laughs> and he, he just doesn't want you to notice him noticing you and just like Thurgis is trying really it, hard not to learn but he's learning you did it henry you inspired another one yeah. so uh, it just really brings a brings a tear to the professor's eye apparently a lot of the eggheads are spending time in the library because i'm guessing that's where zephyrus is also spending his time <laughs> Yeah, uh, Christopher also helped uh, increase some headbands and do some jewel crafting and things like that. He picked up some some jewelry smithing feet as his newest his newest trait. So okay. he's been doing some of that as well. Uh, Professor, how did you spend your time? Uh, so, uh, like I said, the beginning part uh, will be in the library. I'm working on learning all of the languages uh, known to the pearls. So this one, I'll pick up Olympian. Um, since that is pretty like mechanical for this campaign and then just get exposure to the other one so I can pick them up at later levels. Um, spent a lot of time doing that. And after, you know, weeks and weeks of like not leaving the library, only sleeping the hour a day required by the ring of sustenance, uh, I'll eventually like stumble into the harsh desert light and, uh, do some commerce, do some do some selling, do some buying. Uh, at some point in there, learn some new scroll or uh, scribe some scrolls, the ones that the, the the people gifted me, plus the ones from commerce, um, scribe them into my spell book. And uh, at some point in that though, uh, the professor will approach Farisay and ask her to do the, uh, it's the what is it, the Dwemer? What is the name of that? Dwemer? Yeah, on yeah. the uh, the little tower, bone tower he carries yeah. around so that uh, the professor can learn the rest of the command words and more effectively use that. Done. Yes. Okay, I moved your tokens to the library where most of you have uh, set, up, set up shop. Um, it looks like Bukrabek, Tech, and Crojan spend most of their time over the 50 days selling and buying. Booker Beck leading the charge there as he is a priest of Bumpa Dumba Dumba, who is a merchant god. Um, hey, Wither. Uh, yeah, so th that that's how they spend most of their time. Of course, the crafters are actually creating some items for them, uh, which is uh, which is good. So the professor learns a ton of languages and scribes some scrolls, is what I heard. Yes, and inspires another young student to the path of knowledge. Still got it, Henry. Still got it after all these years outside of the classroom. Still got that magic. For some reason, the professor seems like he's in a good mood. Zephyros, how did you spend your time? Zephyros, he went through a period of self-reflection. Um, I think that was probably the most important thing that he wanted to do. Uh, he doubled down on his Tusker heritage, uh, you know, the whole sort of noble man sort of elite part of it. Um, he spent his time learning spells from shared spell books and was really proud to learn plus one healing for some reason, which was this weird thing that he learned. 
just obscure. Uh, but, but but overall, lots of good came from it. He now has a spell called Mage's Magnificent Mansion, and it just sort of fits in with his heritage and cast a lot of times. So more often than not, you didn't nobody knew where he was because he was just you know in this place that nobody could see. You know, in living the life of luxury. Um, Fan banquets. <laughs> yeah, banquets, all that. Um, so, so yeah. So, and and, the, and and in the end, he emerged from his studies with new skills, like the ability to cast quickened, intensified fireballs, which was really, really cool. Um, but, but on the day when he floated out of his mansion, uh, he showcased the upgrade to his arcade bond ring, which adds permanent feather fall to his to his abilities. So, so he's now sort of doubling down on we'll never touch the ground in violence ever again. Uh, so he's just floating around, will not fall over and hit the ground too hard, n none of that stuff. Um, uh, the fact that the ring also has a plus four protection is in, in, and is a, a ring of sustenance was of a secondary importance to him. Like he was all, he was more along, more proud of the mm -hmm. fair aspect of it. Um, in terms of uh, sort of story arc, he acquired Limited Wish. It's a spell that the, uh, the albino wanted. Um, so at some point he will probably do a teleport, go back to the albino, you know, close that loop or something along those lines. So uh, he, I don't think he did it during this time. I don't think there was time for him to do it. Uh, and um, in terms of actual abilities that he's excited to use in spells uh, or, or in combat, he learned Ether Step, so he can dodge some attacks properly now. Very cool. I, I like how power is going to Zephyrus's head in a different way than, say, it's going to Professor's head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the Inquisitive Pharisee has some tasks. I can see there are some crafting. What did what did you what did you do during the fifty five days? I did a bit of crafting. Upgraded some cloaks and rings and and whatnot. I made a little bell that I can use to resurrect my familiar if if bad things happen. Um, and I've mostly tried to get Pixel into a state where uh, she's more survivable, hmm. uh, better AC, uh, a little bit more power in general. Um, so I can I can share some spells with her with a rod of a lesser rod of familiar spell. Um, and I can give her some fire seeds uh, and make them electric, which she's immune to. Um, so uh, Pixel can be my own little bomb, uh, which will be which will be kind of fun. Um, in doing commerce, we we met uh, in I can't remember the name of the town, the Oasis town. Uh, we met uh, a, a dragon owl. Well, uh, the in Flameford, wasn't it? Or was no? He was in uh, Calamounds. Yeah, in Calamounds. Yeah. yeah, with crippled wings that could be cured by a regenerate. This is the level where I get regenerate. Nice. So you um, want you want a little scene with Wicked Claws then? Okay. So I'm I'm going to take Wicked Claws and and pay pay my debt to him. Wicked Claws absolutely saved my life in that battle in Calamounds. Okay, so I've got things that are possible. There, there is time in fifty-five days for, uh, for Zephyros to teleport to go see the the albino to hand him a thing, and there's definitely enough time. What is it? A three action, a three round spell cast. <laughs> you yeah. know, there's enough time for you to go see Wicked okay. Claws. So those are two things that we'll we'll actually do a scene for. Nice. Um, I've learned a number of spells. Uh, I've. Put spells into the stone familiar so that if, if God forbid, uh, uh, we'll still have all those spells. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Regenerate, bestow greater curse, heal harm, and plane shift. I'm going to move the legend lore to the end of the downtime. Sure. It feels like you guys are going to meet and like talk about next steps like once you're done upgrading all of your gear and that sort of thing. And that might be a good time to do the legend lores. Yeah. And there are a lot of things to legend lore, so yeah. we've got plenty of time. Yeah, okay. So uh, the first thing that I kind of want to zone in on is, Zephyrus, you wanted to go meet the uh, the albino. Yeah. Do I have that map here? Um, Valley of the Titans? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, are you bringing anyone with you? I think there's a good chance that uh, Pharaoh say, I think it was Pharaoh say, some, somebody else also had a good conversation because when we were there at the albino, we left what's her name there as well. So maybe there's yeah, some yeah. interest. So maybe there's some interest from somebody to, to see uh, Esri. Okay. Well, I, Bukerbeck just happened to be back when you were planning this. Well, I'm, I'm not going to come with you there. I've got um, work to do at uh, Rostera Station. Might I suggest that you all travel in groups? Just in case um, some of the assassins try to um, murder us again. Seems wise. Seems like a noble suggestion. A priest tend to be wise. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be really upset if you guys fuck off and kill someone without me. <laughs> All right, well, so I... I... Uh, do try to stay out of trouble. I won't be there to heal you. Tafiros is very, very proud because he's got plus one healing now. He's not pretending that he's Bukerbeck, but <laughs> Bukerbeck he, has a, rank, he has a rank there and he's taking it to his head. He hasn't quite figured out that it's meaningless yet. Well, you could aid as a nurse to someone else who's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say that you guys teleport back to uh, Valley of the Titans... You left people here. Uh, immediately, there's stones being tossed down at you. Like, I'm talking like little tiny rocks. Uh. You look up and you can see Ludo standing on top of the. Uh, uh, Delightful. <laughs> Where have you guys been? Uh, around? Do you still re not remember the fun side? You guys been gone forever. <laughs> he's he's now climbing down like a spider. Oh yes. Well, we we took some time to rest and recuperate. And work on our magic. Yes. To be fair, that's not all we did. We also vanquished a bunch of bad people and dispatched a bunch of evil folks. And, you know, uh, the bear here sliced through a couple of things. We've, we've, we've done a bunch of good stuff. We're going, that we did quickly, though. We're going fucking stir-crazy in here. <laughs> Are we allowed to come out now? Is it safe? Oh, oh. <laughs> I suppose... Yeah, it's we only safe. just got done making it safe. It's totally safe now. Uh, Don't believe anyone who says we were fucking off in town and I'll, doing stuff that wasn't important. Our big adventure was to go and find components to make the proper shade of blue for crazy pants in there. Ah. Uh, did you succeed? Well, yeah, I'm a bit of an alchemist. I know how to make blue. There you go. Well done. It wasn't the right shade. We had to work on it a bit. I think the albino's pretty much, um, pretty much ready to, to kick us out, though. What, what makes you say that? that? Oh, he's gone a lot. He's gone on a lot of walks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And are are you guys ready to leave? Yeah. I, 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 talking for myself, I, I'm ready to go anywhere that isn't here. It's hot. It's dry. It's boring. I mean, we can give you endure elements if that's what you want. It'll make it less hot, less dry. <laughs> you know, that'll be nice for a, for like you know, a day. Sure, hit me. <laughs> sure, this is a furious gives them endure elements. Yep. <laughs> oh, hi, Luda. Hey there, Magnum. What's going on? You're still a bag, huh? Oh yes. <laughs> My patootniks haven't grown big enough for me to turn into anything else yet. That's a new one. Sure. Mokadam doesn't have anything that he's keeping for him, does he? Uh, I don't think Mokadam's keeping anything for Ludo. 
Uh, let's have him see. I don't think. I don't think so. Levi either. trusted Mokrin or, or Ludo <laughs> trusted Mokrin. <Mokernum. laughs> yeah, I remember something along those lines. Yep. Yeah. That's certainly possible. I uh, yeah. So. I guess you'll tell everyone what you've been up to. I'm sure Ven Carlo and Neil Landis will want to know. I mean, they've observed a lot of it, but they will want to know how the, how things concluded, I guess. Hmm. Okay. Ludo, Ludo walks with you into the ossuary vault. You do notice that there's a considerable amount of like garbage kind of strewn throughout here that wasn't there before. You've been living here, I see. Uh, yeah. Some evidence of living. <laughs> Ludo kicks like a <laughs> kicks like a couple of corks from a bottle away off to the side. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've been living here. Uh, you can see that there is currently a heated argument going on. Salvatore Scream is painting on the wall in what looks like uh, he's mixing red and. Uh, He's, he's like making purple for some reason. Like hand, hmm. hand paintings. Uh, oh, there they are, says, <laughs> says Neil Landis. Then Carlo comes up to you guys. They, they look like eager to have, I don't know, experiences that aren't just interacting with the same people. Yes. <laughs> They've been here for months. They've been in the <laughs> desert basically for months. I totally oh, forgot we left. Welcome. <laughs> not on our list of downtime activities. <laughs> no, I'm not. Totally forgot about these guys. We are jerks. Wow. <laughs> Arthur soon does, does uh, politely bow to you guys. Then Carlo uh, uh, kind of sat up quickly and he's like, he, he like wants to know what's going on. You can see that. Uh, Neolandis is still sitting, uh, and he's um, kind of playing with his food, which looks like some sort of um, uh, some sort of fant millet um, that they're probably not too enthused with at this point. Did you say fant millet? Yep. Are they eating fant? No, no. As in, it's a fant dish that is oh, created from millet, like a millet porridge that fants. All eat. right. And it's it's it doesn't taste like it's very very bland. It's like more creamy than tasteful. Um, big big creatures probably need to eat a lot. <laughs> you don't, you don't I... spice every every mouthful. Uh, yeah, it does look like uh, they have. This place is much more messy when it was just the uh, the albino living here. You don't see the albino at this point in time, but the 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 others are looking for an update. Even Salvatore Scream wanders over to the table and sits down, paint dripping off of his fingers, and just sits sits down waiting. Waiting. What have we done? We we've been to the Temple of the Moon. We've gotten the mark of Iambulus from the 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 Temple of Iambulus. Um, we visited the Knot of Woe. Uh, in the desert, mm -hmm. and then fought uh, our way through uh, uh, the great beast um, of the desert. Uh, uh, what is that thing's name? Cindermaw? Cindermaw, yes. Uh, uh, we learned about Kazavon there as well, yeah. Yes, yes. The account of the We found that Azriel, the former uh, uh, leader and the great traitor of, of Grand Station uh, is a ghost trapped forever inside of Cindermall's gullet. Right. So interesting. Um, and then we moved to the uh, uh, the Sun Shamans, uh, the Sun Tribes city, um, Flamefort, uh, where our good friend Thurgus uh, hefted a great boulder for a while um, and uh, we fought off an army of assassins, um, uh, gaining the trust of, of the tribe. Sent by the queen, says Vincarlo. 
undoubtedly. Uh, certainly, yes. Uh, there were alchemists. There were um, uh, crimson assassins. Uh, and there were uh, gargoyles. Um, well, primarily gargoyles from the alchemist tower. Yes, right. Not alchemists themselves, exactly. Uh, Jason. And we bargained with the gargoyles. We tried to. The float mage made an appearance a couple of times, as is uh, Simulacra. And Carlo must be running low on those now. Nods slowly. He exchanges glances with Neolandis. The queen does keep people. Some nefarious folk have filled her court, is what Neolandis says. And we've killed a fair share of nefarious folk. Can I go back to my ranch yet, or what, says Jason? <laughs> Is it safe to go back home? <laughs> you guys were going to go to Kalo Mounds. <laughs> you did oh, all these... yeah, we did that long three months ago. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> right. and, and don't worry, Ezri is at Kalo Mounds, and we're going to go... Well, yes, we're going to go and return her from the Dreaming uh, uh, soon. They've, they've been preparing for some time. Waddling out of the darkness of a back room is the albino. Apparently, uh, he tried to take a nap, but it just didn't work because you guys arrived <laughs> and everyone was being loud. It is a long time for someone to be in the realm of sleep. Indeed. Is she lost? She is at a place, a place far away. She's sleeping for months by choice. I don't know if it's by choice. She may not be able to get back, but she might also not be quite lost. Very stubborn she is. Undoubtedly. Of course, she came here to learn the ways of Oracledom. Right. Yes, was she uh, a decent student? Uh, I suppose stubbornness can be a virtue in some forms. So do you think it's safe to go back to Bostera, the town, says Van Carlo? I think we have overstayed our welcome. Zephyrus doesn't say anything, he just looks at the albino for some sort of acknowledgement. The albino just just blinks slowly. We can... I, uh, I you give me a sense motive to see what's to going point. on here. Yeah, let me do that. Yeah. Uh, sense motive, plus 13, here we go. Nineteen. Um, no, the albino, he's probably mildly annoyed, but he's, it, nothing, nothing major has happened. It does look more like Van Carlo's more of a man of action and sitting on his butt for months has been uh, driving him crazy. Zephyrus just looks around the group and he sees that we all sort of get it. He doesn't even have to explain it. We yeah. all understand. Ludo, Van Carlo, and want to go and do something. Jason wants to go home. The others seem quite content, and you, you just have a hard time reading Salvatore. He's off in his own world. Uh, so Zephyrus just turns and says, he doesn't say it to anybody, but he looks at them and he just says uh, that boredom can be dangerous at this point in time. Boredom can still be dangerous out there. You get a slight nod from the Birdman Arthur soon. You shouldn't act rashly, but sitting sitting here and doing nothing is not, is far from rash. Uh, apparently, you are now catching the tail end of an argument between Neolandis and Ben Carlo. Is there a private sanctum in uh, Flameful? Uh, not unless you created one. We can create one. We can create one. I'm just curious if there's someone who keeps one. 
Uh, the uh, statue books in a private sanctum is kind of the ideal way to. I don't remember describing one, and private sanctum is not a druid spell, so. Yeah, yeah. That makes this the safest place, but we might be able to return the the return you to your farm. It's it's a place they might come looking, but it has been some time. Uh, if it's if it's not currently infested, then they may have given up on that path. We can go take a look. We can take a day or so and teleport there and take a look, but. I'm interested in going back home, says Jason. The other is, so. I'm not sure. Mm. If the assassins track, if the, the assassins try to follow their own trail, it'll lead right back there. I wouldn't stay for long, Jason. Well, it's my home. It's not yours. Yes. All right, then. Uh, next topic. <laughs> Zephyr sort of just gets bored with him in their conversation. <laughs> He's, he's just sort of trying to not get goaded into a taking anybody home at this point, because he just doesn't want to go rescue them. He has other things he wants to do. Okay. <laughs> so the, it's the, the old man just complains, and you're like, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so Zephyra sort of just looks at the albino. And um, and he asks if there was any activity out here. Did they see anybody? Did anybody come around? He's just trying to understand sort of what happened here while we weren't here. Have they noticed scouting? Have they noticed anything at all? Um, they they have been keeping watch. At least you find out that this group did keep watch at least in the first few weeks that they were here. Uh, it, they it slowly devolved into nothing happened, so nothing's going to happen, which may be a, uh, a bit of false logic. But uh, they, tell the they tell you that the place has been quiet since you um, killed a bunch of the, the aggressive uh, Vark at the Killing Grounds, the Smoking Butte. Yes. Uh, they have spotted the witches or the hags, they, but nothing out of the ordinary. Um, they did say that there was, uh, maybe a couple months back, a, uh, a group of Kreen that came through here following some herd or another. Interesting. They, 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 it was a, a rare sighting because there's not a whole lot of Kreen left, but they suspect that there's still... A good-sized population of them out there somewhere in Vostera. Zephyrus offers creating a a uh, mages feast <laughs> for everybody here to sort of provide an opportunity for everybody to sit around a table, catch up, have a conversation while drinking wine, eating good food, and being served by some I servants. Think, I think everyone here wants that. Um, <laughs> but he doesn't just do it he he goes to the albino and he asks the albino look i can do this i'm gonna do this in any case because that's where zephyr sleeps uh so he's he's looking for a place to cast so that he can cast it and then once he casts it there will yeah, be a yeah. piece for everybody the albino points at an empty space on the wall there's plenty of spots where you can cast this uh the spell and create the extra, extra dimensional opening um for a dozen people per caster level yeah yeah there's more than enough food oh yeah no oh, yeah more than enough space more than enough food all right this, more than this enough seems serving. to be a morale boost for them as you distract them with good food and wine and uh, <laughs> uh and and some some conjured pretend opulence uh, a as, nine course banquet. Yes, um, uh, you do get to talking. Uh, like even the even the albino comes in to go and sample some of the food and have a look at your spell. Uh, he does remark to uh, Zephyrus, "You have increased your power." I have indeed. I have not just increased in power. I have increased in 
wisdom, but I fear I'm not as wise as you are yet. It will come with age and experience. Yes, but experience is something I'm gaining fast now. We're killing them quickly. There's a lot of bad people out there. I brought you a gift, though. I acquired something along the way. Death is not the only solution to problems. You are correct. But in today's times with the people we're dealing, death is unfortunately the only thing they understand. There are many people for whom death is not the solution. We've got the crowd right here with you. We get to save as many as we can, but we can't save all of them. Okay, the albino just listens. It's a little difficult to save, save somebody if they're running at you, attacking you. Casting spells on you. Zephyrus so casts ether step, steps into the ether and then steps out of it and says, things like that is becoming useful and required for us. Okay. The, the albino is not arguing with you. He's just listening to you talk. He's, but, he's kind of assessing you a little bit. But, you know, I enjoy the more ancestral part of me these days trying to hold on to that it's the type of creature i am that doesn't fight that doesn't want to fight that just wants to i don't want to say rule but create order in the chaos have order mm. not disorder be mindful of the cost Indeed. Be mindful. Your idea of order may not be everyone else's. Zephyr sort of looks, thinks about that, and he goes, in his mind, he's sort of thinking, well, I'm a Tusker. It's only mine that matters. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't say it. He doesn't say yeah. it to the albino. He hands up the screen, he, 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 he looks around in his bag and he pulls out the scroll with limited wish. And he hands it to the albino and he says, there was a man who once asked me for the spell. I wonder if he still needs it. Yes. I have not yet replaced what was stolen. You have made a copy for yourself? I have. Good. In fact, I made that copy specifically for you. He nods. His his tr his trunk takes the scroll and kind of kind of puts it off to the side. It stuffs it into a scroll tube while he's talking. The should you progress beyond this, you will have progressed beyond my own power. Ooh. But not wisdom yet. Power, perhaps, but not wisdom. And for that, true friend, I will always lean on you. There is an opening that has been unfilled for some time. We have not, our people have not had a Grand Tusker. Oh shit. For a long time. It is why many Tuskers or would-be Tuskers duel each other. To prove their might. When you are ready to assume responsibility for more than just yourself. Let me know, and I will tell you what must be done. Oh, King of the the Furious asked, asked the albino, how will I know if I'm ready? Right? 
you would become the leader of all Tuscas. You would be able to shape that way of life and that organization as you see fit. You would be able to decide who could become one and who could not. I see. And with great power comes great responsibility. Yes. Will there be... Is there a location or a locale associated with this? Of course. But you would not want the distraction if you are busy with other things. Yes, I fear that is true. I have a party that relies on me now. Now is not the time. It is good. Most Tuskers see solidarity as a virtue. There are many ways that one can contribute to their tribe, to their clan, to their family. Indeed there is. Okay. Um, he doesn't have anything to give you back. He, like, he gave you a fire staff and uh, he's talking about things that you don't quite understand. There hasn't, in your living memory, there hasn't been a Grand Tusker. Right. And and for, from his, from Zaveros' point of view, because of that, he doesn't really even know what that means. He would need to go figure it out, think about it. Off the top of your head, the Tuskers are kind of like uh, Ronin. masterless roaming individuals imagine if there was an organization an army a unit might be more effective in the days to come the great wheel may need the Tuskers to stand up as one. That may be true. The Knights of, of the Queen have proven themselves corrupted. I'm trying to remember, there was a Tusker that we fought at one point as well. There was... Um... Uh, a rogue, a rogue. Yeah, he was a I don't rogue. Know that he was. I don't know that he was a Tusker, though. Was he? I'm trying to I, for some reason, I think he was. But I mean, it doesn't matter at the end of the day because yeah. you know Tuskers are masterless roamers in any case. But but they, but they do have somewhat of a code like you are to protect your people and some of the other uh and the other um inherited races and by extension uh people like even right. if they're not anthropomorphic animals right so whereas just the rogue yeah there, there could be there could be bad apples claiming to be tuskers or people using it as just a title yeah, so I think Zephyrus will just say that. He will just say that he has come across some bad apples along the way, even on the Tusker side. Um, and that was a bitter pill for him to swallow. Our peoples are strongest when we work together. I will come see you, and we will talk about this again in the future. Ben Carlo, uh, after you guys have your discussion, raises a raises a a, a glass, um, uh, kind of toasts the party, and then uh, very directly asks, "So, what are your next steps? How are we going to bring the fight to the queen?" Uh, 
I believe the next immediate steps was to go and retrieve uh, Esri from the dream world. But no. Esri knows things and has seen things. This could help. We also need to find out where uh, where Kazavan is hiding. Um, if we take the fight to Kazavan, it removes a great source of the queen's power. Neil, and guess we've Kazavan is it's the crown, isn't it? The pieces of Kazavan that are the problem. We should just yeah. kill the queen. Yes. Problem solved. And if Kazavon yes. shows up because the queen's dead, then we baited him out. If not, then we got his fucking crown no. of all the little jagged teeth and stuff. Isn't but, the crown, though, more of a conduit for Kazavon? The, the crown protected her. I've never seen anything quite like it, says Neolando. We, we've talked about this before. Yes. Snapping heads with their hands and catching, catching bolts. She was covered in something that came from the crown, a great darkness that acted like a shield. Indeed, it, it is the spirit of Kazavan, if I'm not mistaken. But um, the, the, our, let's say, friend here has been painting a great deal about this blue menace. Uh, and there is a direction that... Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, finally, finally Salvatore, Salvatore Scream points at Thurgus and, and is screaming blue. Oh, see, he agrees with me. We just need to go kill the queen. <gasps> He's hiding behind the table. Your shield is a scale of Kazavan himself. Oh, you mean my scale? It's a pretty sweet buckler. You want to see it, mate? And I <gasps> <don't know. laughs> he goes running from a room, but then he, he like a, a few moments later, he's like fascinated by it, like he's afraid of it, but wants to look at it. It's it's really weird. There is a portal somewhere from here to the realm that Kazavan inhabited. He eventually hides behind some furniture, but like you'd have to be blind to not see him. Perhaps there we could find the secrets of his uh, of his power. Ludo's throwing like chicken bones at him. <laughs> apparently, apparently. Ludo is taken to tormenting Salvatore a bit. <laughs> Seems likely. He was a jerk. Uh, was a... Salvatore, the shield's fine. See, as as long as I just hold it. Oh, oh, what's what's happening? Oh, oh God, it hurts so bad. Ah, I'm just fucking with you, mate. It's fine. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Oh, shit, it's blue. It's wrong. It's. Blue. Yeah. Yes. It's that blue too, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes. It's that blue. Uh, yes, you. Uh... What have you been painting, Salvatore? Can I peruse your works? Ah, lady in blue. He's been yes. he's been painting the damn queen, but she's been in a nimbus of blue. Yes, well that makes sense. She is sort of surrounded by Kazavan's powerful spirit. Arthur soon goes out of the magnificent mansion, fetches some stuff, and comes back with like a a stack full of. Uh, parchment, which isn't a really great thing to make paintings on, but uh, you do see that there are picture after picture of the queen uh, wearing a blue dress or wreathed in blue flames or uh, getting struck by lightning yet still standing there. Uh, and it's all the same um, blue period for uh, <laughs> Salvatore Scream. Zephyros, the Zephyros gets a bunch of those unseen servants just stand there and each holds up one of them. So there's like a ton of unseen servants just oh. holding them. Blue. Blue. Yep, yep. She's got the power. I, we all got it, Jason. <laughs> Jason says. Yeah. Uh, as far as we could figure that she's becoming more blue over time. Oh. 
Well, that could be growing in power somehow. Yeah, it only took us a month to figure that one out. Ah, great. Well, I'm glad you used the time wisely. I don't feel as guilty anymore. There's a chicken bone that comes through in your direction. <laughs> <laughs> Out of instinct, I swat it from the air. Yeah, with, with, with your with like a dinner fork or something like that. <laughs> I don't let things fly towards Pharisee. Just out of habit. Yes. What did the Rakasta have to say about Kazavon? They would know the most. It is why you went into the desert, isn't it? It is. They have yet to divulge all of the secrets there, I believe. There is a place that Kazavon was, was banished to, a pearl, uh, that has a connection here, but, but we're not quite certain where. That is what I recall. All of it, at least. Then I suggest you go back to the Rakasta and find yeah. out what they know. I notice that none of your downtime activities were researching in the library of Ocasavon. <laughs> Can I can I ask we a quick question? Sidetracked yeah. with money. <laughs> can I, can I ask a quick I, question? I do have downtime? a legend lore yeah. on that shield. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, legend <laughs> le the legend lores, which could happen but, now, but yeah, yeah. You're, we could have spent more time on that. And in, probably in the, should spend a couple days. Maybe in this block, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the downtime, did Darian ever show his face? He did. Okay, I took my fucking cloak back from that asshole who just vanished. <laughs> that, that's with that's like our... fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, during the downtime, <laughs> given that you guys were potentially going into the dream realm, uh, Darian, on a day that Darian appeared, Booker, Beck, Tech, and whoever didn't um, get the blessing uh, of Iambulus are going to take a quick teleport into that room and a quick teleport out. And they receive the blessing of Iambulus so that they can um, na help navigate the dream realm effectively. So I've already put on Tech uh, Makarnam and Bukerbeck sheet as well as Darian that they received that tattoo. Yeah, you could you could take you could you could swap items with Darian that sort of thing. He he does appear. He's just not here on this day. His sword's being carried around, we'll say, by Bukerbeck while they're uh, while they're off selling things. So there is a number of legend lores, and then there's poking around the library and picking up kind of where you left off your research about Kazavon. Uh, do you guys want to do that now? It's probably finished the downtime stuff before we get Ezri. Just yeah, okay. So. Um, yeah, the, the albino suggests that you go back and continue your investigation. And there's a bunch of like, they, they didn't do it already from, 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 the, uh, from yeah. the other NPCs that are there. And uh, um, are you convincing them to, to stay here? Are you saying it's safe to go to Bostera Station? Or I, where are you I kind of hurting these people? Here is a private sanctum, right? Yep. It, this is safe. And the only is still a threat. A They'd day. be crazy to leave. Okay, give me a diplomacy check as you're trying to convince them to do something that. But you know, yeah, yeah. I, I that that I will that I will tell them. Um, they can make their own choice, but yeah. Uh, can you scribe them a couple scrolls of Mage's Magnificent Mansion? <laughs> so then at least they can have like a nice like date night, you know? It's a seven, <laughs> yeah, like... It's a seventh level spell. If you guys stay here a day. Uh, I won't make that affect your downtime. The albino will copy Mage's Magnificent Mansion into a spell book and cast it for them to keep them busy. Nice. There you I go. Think, I think that's probably good. Between, I think we can spare Between the, uh, the faux luxury of Mage's Magnificent Mansion and a 42 on the diplomacy <laughs> check, you convince your allies to continue to stay here because it's safe. <laughs> Don't yeah. do as we do. Do as we say. Uh, and uh, they're they're willing to stay. They do want to play a part when they when you finally go and strike against the queen. Uh, Neolandis is adamant for some reason that uh, 
there are heroes that, that faced Kazavon before and died. Kazavon killed thousands of people himself. There's got to be... They must know of some weakness that he has. The dead? No, the... The descendants of... Yes. The heroes that faced him. Yes, which which are the 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 sun shaman and and king? Yes, the the people in flame for uh, Neil, is uh, I think so. Yes, <clears throat> I wouldn't call him king though. He does seem to get a bit prickly now if you refer to him as such. I fear that if we do strike against the queen, we'll have one chance. Thankfully, we only ever need one. Isn't that right, uh, Thurgus? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, can we go fuck up that worm again on our way? That was pretty fun. Uh, I'm afraid we haven't the time right now. Boo, Professor. Boo. Boo. We must get you back to the library. Boo, we Professor. Boo. He studies. hates fun. The professor's the worst. Boo. Come now. All right. Boo. None of that. So you leave your allies there. Um, on the way back, you're going to make a stop in Callow Mounds because I think you said Farisay had something to do uh, yes. while there. Um, you've already been back a couple of times to sell some goods and uh, they... After Bukerbeck told them about your deeds with uh, winning the trust of um, the folks of Flameford and the uh, the Tribe of the Sun, the Tribe of Bone seems to open up a little bit more, and they're not as hurt. They are they're not in a, a great hurry to have you leave the Callow Mounds. Um, there was that right. initial reaction when. Uh, uh, Assassins were attacking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you do. But uh, I'm still you, happy to see us back. Yep, you do find Wicked Claws. Uh, he, he, you, you send a runner to go get him, and he comes out walking without like, not flying, but he walks up to you. Mm. Ah, Wicked Claws. I've not forgotten what you've done for me in in saving my life. I said that I would see if I could find a way to restore your flight, and I have. I found the power in myself. What do you say? Mm, as long as it is no trick. Oh, it's no trick. I cast Regenerate. Okay. And Perfect. touch Wicked Claw's wings. Uh, I believe this heals his wings with a... Um... Uh, so. A tightening, leathery kind of sound. His wings begin to stretch, and the uh, uh, the maiming and holes in them begin to repair. Yes, excellent. Oh, my wings—they're restored. Even the small holes that I that were put in them when I was young are gone. Yes. Nature has a power of rejuvenation. The seasons will bless you. Yeah, a little bit of color returns to his skin. Um, Spring is coming. As any ruined organ, so I assume that any like minor damage through sickness or just age, kind of also, yeah, he seems very spry. How shall I repay you for this? This is more than, than a gift. Well, if you ever have the chance to save my life again, I'd encourage you to do it. <laughs> my eyes. Other than that, we're even. I can see clearly now. Indeed. No obstacles will be in your way as you fly through these skies. Should you journey again in the desert, I will act as scout for you. Thank you. 
We may indeed, for there are some things we'll still need to find. Well, you have proven yourselves to the tribe of the sun, the tribe of the moon, and the tribe of the bone. And you have proven yourself brave Rakastans. There are still dangerous places in the desert. This place hates life. The desert itself, you think, hates life? Mm. Mm. I always have the feeling that this place would be not so dry, not so inhospitable if there weren't some force behind it. But what do you know of the Nomen? Mm. In the, the valley of uh, the valley that uh, that it lives in. Old. We live in places that were old before old became old. Indeed. The place of Titans. Yes. Uh, what do you know of sights of the Titans? Perhaps there are some that we have not yet seen. No one sees the Titans anymore, yet we see the things they left behind. Indeed. Things that their followers left behind. Places that they no longer visit. Places they've discarded like broken toys. If you discover ruins uh, that uh, that we've not yet visited, we would be interested. The professor in particular, I'm sure, could be convinced to visit any place that would be worthwhile. But mm. hard, hard to throw... Did I hear opportunity for study? Hard to throw a stone and not find an old place. Fair enough. There are ruins outside of Flameford you should go and visit. Yes, yes. We have been to those. Uh, Thurgus has grown from his time there, but there is yet another secret that would require astonishing strength to reveal. Warn, you should be. These ruins have echoes of those who lived there before. Indeed. The gods still count amongst their special places, these ruins. Hmm. Yes. This place, even. Yes. This place, even. Built on old place. Old water. Are there any other secret places here? Here in Callow Mound? Yes. Uh, he looks a little bit nervous. There are many mounds that are... Let me see. There are many mounds where the dead have been buried. Yes. We don't wish to disturb your dead. Mm. But... Uh, if there is a place that is not a place of your dead, but a place of... a place much older... No. Callow Callow Mound surrounding old water. Oldest mm. thing here. Our mounds are sacred. Would not just be good for you to poke around. You've come this far and gained so much trust already. We'll do no such thing then. Mm. Now if you excuse me, I will want to take a fly around. Indeed, you should. Do not, do not laugh. It has been many years since I've taken flight. <laughs> <laughs> you are spry he, he says uh, it to a bunch of like he says that to like the the, <laughs> the streets that you're in. There's a few amused looking cat folk that are there. There are people watching. Wicked Claws does take a run and and like flaps his wings a bunch of times and it, oh he's gonna crash into a stall. No, he just manages to get above it and. Not the most graceful uh, flyers. I don't think dragons are, but let me check. Let's see. Oh, fly alongside him. 
dragons are 30 foot speed poor maneuverability flyers yeah he, he's he's not doing <laughs> Just, many way give him some confidence that Pharos will cast feather fall on him so that if something goes wrong he's okay okay yeah i'll um, uh I've got sixty foot with average maneuverability. So you're I'll just floating, <laughs> floating with him as he's hustling. <laughs> Do not embarrass me. <laughs> I just sure explains to him what the full. It's time. okay, buddy. I got you. I got you. Ah! <laughs> he almost crashes into a stall, getting away from Thurgus, but eventually he flies up into the air and uh, is trying to get away from Thurgus. <laughs> oh, you're doing it! You're doing it! <laughs> Oh, good job! I promise I won't let Better go. Featherfall Neil is when someone's ca when someone's falling as an immediate action, you catch their fall. You can't cast it ahead of time. Oh, I thought I can cast it ahead of time. Never mind. No, your okay. ring, however, has it constantly in it. So the second you fall, you can you can cast it from your ring, basically. Okay, yeah, Wicked Claws. Oh, get away from me! You're, you're doing great, buddy. <laughs> He's. If it's in jet, if it's in good jest, he seems to respond all right. But if yeah. you're actually just tormenting him, uh... no, no, okay. he's like genuinely worried that like he's just gonna hurt himself because it's been years. Yeah, he catches an updraft. Apparently, it's like walking, or if you know what a bike is, you know, <laughs> riding. Oh, you those. got this, mate. I don't even know why I was worried. Good for you. And I'll fuck off back down. Okay. Uh the group of you returns back to Flameford after getting offer of having someone scout for you. The um, big giant billowing cloud behind Thurgus goes back into his cloak and he's just, oh, thank God I got that from that fucking sword back. I thought he's going to keep it forever. <laughs> he just like rolls his shoulders a little bit. <sighs> Oh, right, because you, you lent him a, uh, an item and yeah, he Yeah, we gave him the freaking wings of flying and he... <laughs> 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 it's like a 54k magic item with permanent <laughs> flight. <laughs> All right, so the days the days end up ticking by. Um, the 55 days is complete. You've finished all of your selling and crafting. You've got your new items and you find yourself sitting, uh, sitting in the library uh, and Zephyros, you can tell by the, uh, uh, by the way he's floating around, wants to summon a mansion <coughs> for you guys to go and go and eat in. However, as you're starting to delve into, um, more serious lines of investigation, are you taking any precautions? I, I overheard you guys saying you wanted to create a mage's private sanctum here. Yeah, I think, I think we would. Yeah, I think we'll cast the private, the, 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 the mage's uh, mansion, and then inside it we'll cast a mage's private sanctum or something or something along those lines. So Fears will discuss it with a group to make sure that we do it the right way. I, I also cast the text scrying literally every day. Okay. Yeah, I also have that. Yeah. And so we keep Great. that up pretty, pretty constantly. Um, you were want... doing the riskiest research. I will usually stay near them just in case someone scries like if i'm not doing anything i'm i'm near the people that are doing the questionable downtime activities yep uh if you want to um hide what you're doing inside of the mage's magnificent mansion you would cast it inside it's like an extra-dimensional space yeah if you want to hide where you actually cast the magnificent mansion then it would be outside we can, we can probably afford to do both yeah, yeah we can is do private both. sanctum like you're not making this per permanent, right? No, we could. No, we we're not. Put in the library and then make a magnificent mansion off the library. Yep. And yeah, I um, think. Yeah. How long does uh, private sanctum last? It's pretty long, right? Twenty four hours. So. Twenty four hours. I think. I think the professor will just be sitting in one in the library, okay. always doing research as well. Great. What are you guys researching, and what are you looking into? Uh, the Sun Shaman notices that you guys are back and has pointed you towards some books that he's collected, uh, mostly on the topic of uh, of the time of Kazavon, because I assume like that's originally what you guys had asked for. Yeah, I 
I'm curious about the realm of Kazavon and the the portals to different pearls. Okay. I also have written down that we learned that there were pieces of Kazavon, skull, fangs, claws, tail, horn, ribs, and wings. I think that's what those were pieces. Of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 